The Lord be with you. Let's pray for our time together in God's word. O oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant, covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world is crucified to me and I to the world. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all of this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him but turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I had the good fortune of growing up in a time and place where kids in the neighborhood got to be out in the streets all day, all summer long, playing with one another. It was a glorious time. I am sad that my boys don't get to experience that same kind of season of carefree living and playing. I remember one evening when the streetlights came on and my brother and I were headed back into the house for dinner, one of our neighborhood buddies came up behind my younger brother and pantsed him. And uh, they didn't do that because he was mean, he was a good friend of ours and he was just joking around, but it just so happened that my younger brother Matthew was not at the age yet where he could just laugh it off. 
uh, he really had his feelings hurt by that, and he was very much embarrassed. And for my part, as his older brother, when confronted by my brother's pantsing there on the street outside our house, I responded with uproarious laughter. When we went inside and Matthew explained to my mom and dad what had happened to him and that I had simply laughed uh, while he was suffering, my dad turned to me and said, Ryan, I'm disappointed in you. You're his older brother. You need to care for Matthew and watch out for him. You need to defend him. Now think about that little story. If my dad retold that story, or my mom retold that story, or my younger brother Matt retold that story, you might think that they were processing a bad memory. They were expressing some grudge or disappointment that they still carried on their insides. But when I tell that story, and I tell it to my own boys so that they can learn from my little mistake and hopefully treat one another better than I treated my brother in that moment, well, the story takes on a different feel. That's kind of the big point I want to make through today's sermon. Sometimes the way we interpret a story depends on who's telling it. Today's gospel is a great example of that. When we read today's gospel as an impartial report of a historical event, you can't help but feel a little bit sorry for St. Peter. Sure, he overstepped his bounds by trying to tell the Messiah what he could and could not do, but it came from a place of love and loyalty for his friend and mentor. I feel kind of bad for him that Jesus snapped at him so harshly. The way we feel about the story and our interpretation of it both may change a little bit, however, when we learn the church's story behind this story, more specifically, the story of who is telling this story. According to church legend, St. Peter himself basically dictates this entire gospel to Mark the Evangelist, who incidentally may be the same person as John Mark, the co-worker and cousin of St. Barnabas. If that were the case, if St. Peter were retelling this story, then the story of our Lord Jesus snapping at St. Peter as his personal Satan, along with all the other Mark and stories that depict St. Peter in a very unflattering light, would maybe feel a little less like an unfair criticism of the man and a little more like faithful vulnerability by the man. When I hear this story, I wonder to myself, if the great Saint Peter can share his greatest failures as a follower of Jesus for all Christian posterity in the hopes that we might understand a little bit better what it means that Jesus is Lord, then maybe we can be open and honest with one another about our own failures and our own struggles. When we are in the midst of those struggles, God may very well work through our vulnerability to help us. When we've overcome those struggles, God may work through our vulnerability to help others. So maybe in this second week of Lent, it's finally time for Pete's sake, for St. Pete's sake, to be who you really are instead of who you want people to think you are. Maybe it's time to tell stories 
Not stories that build you up in front of others, but stories that share where you have fallen down so that you can testify to God's goodness in raising you up and that so that someone else can learn from your mistakes. May that happen for you this week, my friends, in the spirit of Jesus. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now with the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. That you would lead your church this Lent to practice vulnerability Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That you would comfort those affected by this winter's harsh weather, especially the people of Texas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That you would strengthen the health care providers, researchers, and policymakers who are working to bring this pandemic to an end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer that you would heal those who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks that more and more of our congregation's members have received the vaccine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And bring us with all the saints into Christ's eternal feast of victory. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Be at peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. <laughs>